wonderful to have you here, Pushpamala. I've always been a huge admirer of your works, very silent admirer. Uh, but what I like about your works is the fact that it's so linked with what you would call theater documentation. But your, yours, of course, go much beyond that, where you make yourself the subject of your imagination, uh, where you use your own body, which is recast as the material for your creative imagination. Uh, I would really be interested to know how you arrived at this kind of uh, way of working, which is really a genre by itself. And I think you're the creator of that genre, or the most visible uh, face of that genre, which is fascinating, which is exciting, which seems to see history, calendar art, popular art, cinema, and theater in a completely off-center way, where moments are captured. Mm. Um, it's a pleasure talking to you, Neelam. I'm also a great admirer of yours, and I try to catch all your plays, and mm. I love the way you work with actors and with, you know, the um, scenography. Um, so it's uh, very interesting talking to a, discussing things with the theatre person because you have your point of view and as we, uh, you know, we were talking earlier that it would be nice to have, uh, 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 you know, uh, for you to ask questions from uh, your point of view as yeah. a, a theatre person. Um, first, I, I'd like to say that I didn't invent any genre. This kind, uh, this jo uh, kind of genre of performance art was already existing uh, in the 90s when I, uh, and quite widely so all over the world. Uh, when I started working with uh, performance, photo performance rather, mm. I'm very wary of live performance actually. Mm. I've got terrible stage fright and uh, I don't like that rawness of connecting to strange people. I don't like strange people uh, staring at me for instance. Mm. So this is, I like this kind of controlled kind of uh, performance in a controlled uh, kind of situation. Mm. So um, yeah, it was very improvisatory. You know, in the mid 90s when I, um, uh, I started off by chance. Mm. Uh, you know, doing uh, Phantom Lady or Kismet, mm. which was my first uh, photo performance work. So, how it happened was that this um, gallery, Lakire in uh, Bombay, mm -hmm. uh, asked me, asked uh, a Bombay artist to do a work on cinema uh, for a show. It was some kind of, uh, I think, anniversary of uh, mm. Indian cinema or world cinema. Um, so, I had this kind of uh, idea of uh, recreating. Uh, uh, you know, this hey, hey pose of fearless mm. Nadia. Mm. You know, I'd never seen her films, mm -hmm. but I'd, I'd read about her. So, mm. and I had this kind of brochure of uh, hers, which had this particular thing. So, I got this costume made. Mm. It was just a very playful kind of naughty mm. thing, you know. And um, I asked a friend of mine and we just took some roles in uh, Shireen Gandhi's uh, uh, house in Bandra. And, uh, you know, when I saw those pictures, the four roles of film, uh, it was so interesting. Of course, some things didn't work, mm. and uh, but some of the material was extremely interesting. Mm. Uh, I, d I said, why waste this material? Let me develop it into a body of work. So when I started thinking about it and said, look, I can't be in every frame uh, alone posing here and there, you know, it's boring. So I should have a story mm. with some other characters in it. So I said, what kind of a story could I have? And you know, till the 80s, uh, the typical stereotypical story mm. or archetypal story of Hindi films particularly mm. was the lost and found twins. Yeah. So where one grows up bad and one grows up good. <laughs> and then, uh, so there's this kind of crisis mm. at the end and mm. so on. So I said that would be very interesting, interesting to do. Mm. So I created this vamp character mm. who was like a kind of Nadira kind of character. Mm. Like, you know, so the uh, Hindi film vamps were always in Western clothes, you know, mm. with a long cigarette. holder with a cigarette yeah. and so on. Mm. And they were the kind of uh, dancers or malls of these mm. Uh, mm. mafia dons. Mm. Uh, so this was my kind of uh, story on which I wanted mm. to hang this thing. But actually it was a kind of a psychological uh, story. I was more interested in this whole thing of the mirror image, the yeah. twin of the self, mm. the doppelganger mm. and so on. So I was playing with these kind of things and then I... Um, so there were two ways in which I could have developed the story. One was as a comedy. Mm. which the original Nadia films were, mm. with cardboard sets and yeah. like, you know, yeah. um, no, like, no psychology, it was very kind of surface, you know. Mm. Uh, it was action and it was slapstick and mm. so on, mm. comedy and so on. Uh, so you that was the comedy was intentional or unintentional? It was comic as well. 
it because was she's fun. yeah, mm -hmm. because for one thing, like she used to be, she Robust. was this huge sort of uh, muscular, muscular woman, yeah. and she has this boyfriend who's half her size, for instance, <laughs> an Indian boyfriend. And then I, I remember one scene in uh, uh, Frontier Mail, I think it was. Uh, it's very strange. I don't think I've ever seen a film, like, a scene like this, where she is in the gym. Hmm. So she is wearing uh, shorts and hmm. a T-shirt, and she's enormous, and she's uh, you know lifting weights or something. And the small kind of puny boyfriend works in, and uh, he's looking at her admiringly you know mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, you know they have this kind of romantic conversation mm -hmm. so there's this comic element mm -hmm. uh, but what I decided to I mean there are some comic elements in the final work my work as well but I decided to uh, do it in the film noir style because mm -hmm. several of the photographs were very dark mm -hmm. and then I thought I would get this uh, more layers you know mm -hmm. if I actually had a psychological sort of uh, mm -hmm. an inner kind of world kind mm -hmm. of angle to it mm -hmm. uh, so that was the first work and then I was still doing sculpture at that point and it was like a kind of one-off thing which mm. nobody took seriously actually mm. everyone came and laughed it was uh, hugely successful in terms of audience reaction mm. but uh, nobody took it seriously in the art world as mm. a kind of a serious work mm. uh, though i worked on it for about over two years mm. at three shoots over two years and i worked on it very kind of systematically mm. you know i did a lot of reading mm. and uh, mm. yeah, and thinking about it mm. uh, so after that i got very interested in the uh, this whole way of working because it um, uh, suits me, my temperament, I think, mm. you know, because I can bring in all kinds of different things that I'm interested in. Mm. I mean, I can, uh, I'm interested in theatre, film, literature, theory, uh, mm. you know, uh, women's studies, daily life, mm. jokes, uh, whatever, wit, humour, mm. uh, different genres, mm. for instance, of narration, like I use the uh, detective thriller mm. genre, which I've grown up reading, mm. of course, then the melodrama, mm. the, you know, the love story, mm. uh, so, and the ghost story, I've used different kinds of genres mm. in my work. Uh, so I can put it all in in, in in a very, and what I like is that this whole thing of the photo romance or something, it's very abbreviated, you know. Uh, people ask me why I don't make, you know, feature films, mm. but I'm not interested in stretching it out and making a kind of conventional narrative out of it, actually. But there is a narrative. There is a moment in a narrative. Mm -hmm. And because most of your uh, visual work, mm -hmm. most of your work, belongs so much to the collective memory of Mm -hmm. a certain generation mm -hmm. that has grown up mm -hmm. familiar with the exploits of fearless mm -hmm. Nadia mm -hmm. and of uh, mm -hmm. Shakuntala and of uh, mm -hmm. the villain and of mm -hmm. uh, the Ramayana and you know the, the, the legacies of our epics. Mm -hmm. So what happens is there's an immediate identification in mm -hmm. terms of the popular memory that we all have within us. But within that, mm -hmm. you do a certain something, you know, mm -hmm. which just turns it around. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the images which have been sanctified by tradition suddenly get a slight note mm -hmm. which brings a smile to your face. You know, even mm -hmm. uh, though that was such a beautiful uh, animation of the Kalari mm -hmm. being done and the image of mm. uh, the, the uh, a woman you know repeated as you said the mirror image mm. like a puppet mm. and suddenly there's this mm. it's like a gunshot you know with mm. the blood oozing out mm. it didn't fall into any framework of realism mm. but in a certain way destabilizes mm -hmm. and dislocates something which is traditional and takes it somewhere else mm. so it's a very in, it's a very it's a very clever funny mm. perceptive intelligent Thank way you. of kind of <laughs> turning things around mm. um, I mean uh, you know your backdrops would seem to recreate a Parsi company theatre mm. with its uh, love seats and its mm. gramophone mm. you know the detailing the choices you make I mean where does all your research or your S source material come from and yes they have a yeah. great sense of humor well it could be very melancholy as well for yes. example phantom lady for one uh, for one thing a lot of people find it very melancholy uh, i remember one uh, but i think uh, it's the whole quality of the mask no uh, it's it also this uh, sometimes many of my things are about the single woman fighting the world in a sense mm. you know so uh, 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 one woman um, young woman said uh, 
you know, it, normally people laugh heartily when they see the work. And uh, one woman came, uh, in Bombay, in the Bombay show, came up to me and said, uh, oh, this is so uh, sad, you know, it's like uh, single women living in the big city and having to battle, uh, you know, all the demons, you know, mm. uh, inner or outer by themselves. So that she's alone, like, you know, uh, you know, battling the mafia or going through the city. Mm. I mean, on the one hand, it's an adventure, it's a great adventure. And on the other hand, there's this kind of a sadness and melancholy in it as well. So I like to play with different kinds yeah. of things. I like that kind of fine edge, mm. you know, between uh, maybe... Um, which, which gives you the right to misinterpret. Yeah, you can interpret it in this, uh, yeah. different ways. Mm. Uh, and about this kind of... Uh, yeah, I have a... I mean, I call my work the pseudo archive actually. Mm. Uh, that's because um, I have a kind of, I make up a sort of archive in my mind mm. and it's not the conventional archive, that's why it's pseudo, mm. uh, which can mix up different kinds of things which I'm interested in. Mm. I'm subje subjectively interested in or I've experienced or I've studied or um, I just like, mm. uh, you know, uh, and they may be very disparate things. Mm. Like, uh, I mean, uh, my work is connected with popular culture, but actually I use a lot of uh, uh, references from high culture. Uh, from, uh, you know, art for instance, western classical art or Indian mm -hmm. classical art or, uh, you know, art film or literature mm -hmm. or philosophy, mm -hmm. different kinds of things mm -hmm. I, I use. But um, they're sort of um, uh, woven together, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and what weaves them together is my own uh, kind of deep interest in them, so which mm -hmm. I'm constantly sort of uh, following, you know. Uh, so I do make some sort of things like I cut out, for example, I have these boxes in which I keep newspaper cutouts, for instance, mm. what things that interest me. Sometimes mm. they can be just images or th sometimes they can be uh, um, uh, whatever articles mm -hmm. uh, about different things, even mm. kind of news. Uh, like, for example, what I'm, one of the things I'm interested in is this whole, uh, I have this theory that uh, of the national masquerade. Mm -hmm. You know, the nation as masquerade, mm. the Indian nation as masquerade. Mm -hmm. And what's very funny is that um, on the one hand, I grew up uh, with, the, my mother, uh, with a mother who was an amateur actress. Mm -hmm. So since we were kids, all our photographs, for example, are in different costumes. Mm -hmm. So she used to make us, uh, uh, she, she used to act in amateur theatre in ladies club situation, not mm -hmm. in the open. Right. And even radio, mm -hmm. and many times playing male mm -hmm. characters. Mm -hmm. And then she would organize these pageants like Great Women of India mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Brides of India and mm -hmm. so on. So sh we would be roped into it as kids and as young mm -hmm. teenagers and so my friends and all that. So this seems to be a real direct and, uh, connection. I'm using child, that history actually. Yeah, yeah. your childhood experience yeah, yeah. and how you kind of took it in your yeah. own direction as yes. you became an artist. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I've the whole sense of transforming it into yeah. a way of working or into a sensibility yeah. towards your work? See what happened was in 96, you mm -hmm. know, after I first shot Phantom Lady, I moved to Bangalore mm -hmm. and I, I said, how will I relate? Mm -hmm. uh, I was going back to my hometown after 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, I sort of escaped mm. uh, at 20, saying I'll never go back. Mm. Uh, you know, because it's full of my relatives always spying on the younger <laughs> generation, as you can imagine. Mm. Uh, at, and at, th at this point, like 20 years later, I decided to go back because I had a plot of land there and I wanted to build a studio and all mm. that. So I said, how am I, am I going to enter this place, you know? Mm. I don't want to do it through family, caste, community, mm. or what, what not, like, mm. you know? So I said, this is a very interesting history, you know? This whole, since I'd already started using this whole notion of playing roles or mm. uh, masquerade. I said this whole history of uh, my mother's, for instance, like, you know. Um, but another thing I want to connect it to the outside world in a sense, uh, I was saying about this, talking about these newspaper cuttings. Mm. So this is very strange thing of, say, for example, I think Nehru started it. Mm. Uh, the prime minister going, for example, to these far-flung areas, usually tribal areas, and which may have a lot of political disturbance, mm -hmm. and he's always dancing with the tribals, and also wearing the, the costumes, sometimes you know? even the jacket. <laughs> and exactly. The, yeah. And uh, so, uh, the, I, I, I'm, I, and the Republic Day parades, mm -hmm. for instance. Mm -hmm. In fact, Jyotindra Jain has written very interestingly about it, and how this whole notion of authenticity mm -hmm. of the folk or the tribal, mm -hmm. you know, so how these parades are made. Mm -hmm with mass uh, uh, folk costumes being mm. stitched by mm. the culture department yes. yeah, and, you know, and then uh, you know they mm. cook up these dances which mm. goes back to the mm. regions mm. and they become the authentic yeah. they start copying yeah. that you know uh, so this kind of thing this whole notion of masquerade even mm. at a national mm. level you know mm. at a social or national level mm. in fact in Karnataka Bangalore there's this guy a man called Vatal Nagaraj mm. uh, who has this party which kind of um, 
um, which is sort of oppositional and he fights for various rights. Mm. Uh, so, but he always dresses up in that costume. So mm. If he's leading the policeman in an agitation, he'll be dressed like a policeman. If he's leading the farmers, he's dressed like a he's farmer. Not, uh, and <laughs> he's, he's not uh, jailed for penal offence to... <laughs> no, he's a, he's a character. Yeah. A, uh -huh. so, uh, so, this I'm also mm. tapping into this whole, uh, uh, this, uh, whole history mm. of, uh, in India, you know, of this kind of uh, different kinds of masquerades going on. But tell me, Pushpamala, you know, yeah. because you make yourself the subject of your own inquiry. Yeah. You're also the object and you're also, also the subject, yeah. which is like having a dual vision, mm -hmm. which is a very interesting vision to have anyway. You know, we have multiple visions, mm. but this is such a definitive mm. dual vision, um, which is what acting is all about. You know, you tell mm. your actors, which is the instructions you give to you an actor that you're acting mm. but you also must see yourself acting mm. which means that they, they must be the same process of being a performer mm. entering into your being when you start wearing the costumes because externally when you see yourself transforming mm. somewhere it's like putting makeup on your soul you know the, <laughs> the spirit also yeah. gets transformed so mm. that moment when you are being shot Hmm. I'd love to know what your state of mind is. Uh, my state of mind is very distracted usually because I'll tell you how it happens. It happens in my house. Hmm. I've got my studio. I, now I don't live there anymore but I used to live um, in the house where I had a studio attached. Hmm. Uh, so I don't have uh, you know formal assistance as permanent assistance as such. So suddenly I ask young artists to come and help me. Hmm. And uh, what happens is that when I'm all dressed up like some character Lakshmi or something hmm. and I'm standing there, hmm. uh, people are running around asking me like you know where can we get so and so and where can we get this needle and thread because yeah. they're supposed to do certain yeah. things and help with the hmm. production. Hmm. So I'm completely distracted and then you know I, I used to have these uh, uh, video, uh, some you know these commercial video uh, people coming and uh, videoing the sh uh, uh, videographing the shoots. So they would be wandering around all over my, mm. over my house, you know, touching my books and taking out things from here and there. So it's crazy madness mm. in a sense. Yeah, and yeah. and these lighting people come, mm. like there are six guys mm. with lights. Mm. I don't use, I don't do such elaborate shoots all the time, but when I shoot in my studio, yeah, we have uh, uh, oh. uh, cinema lights and mm. so on. So it's quite crazy and um, and then the makeup is done in the kitchen. Mm. So again, somebody is making chai and then, uh, you know, I'm sort of giving instructions <laughs> here and there and so the on. It's the same story when you put up a play. <laughs> <laughs> the chaos then, uh, yeah, and to try okay, and find yeah. your little space of calmness. Yeah. So actually what I do is, uh, uh, I would say that uh, I'm more of a director or producer than a performer. Mm. Uh, so the performance is actually a mise-en-scene that I, mm. uh, because it's usually a photograph, mm. uh, I, I plan the mise-en-scene. Yeah. So there is a whole set or it's a, uh, if it's an outdoor location mm. uh, in the photo romances, then I, uh, I already, I go earlier, I choose these locations and I already take some test photographs like, mm. like, like sketches in my camera. Mm. So I've worked out the places but we also improvise. So uh, the lighting, the costume, the, the whole uh, scenario uh, actually um, uh, is a whole mise-en-scene that is created which creates the mood. So I'm very interested in the rasa mm. theory actually. Yes, I know, I've seen So I'm not exactly, I'm a, a very Navaras. back actor I think. Mm. I just, in fact, if I try to act, I look ridiculous and uh, I, do, I try not to act. I try to be as still as possible. But I and don't think, uh, <laughs> you know, maybe that's what you think, but yeah. for a viewer, mm -hmm. you know, we all carry our own narrative and we see something okay. and that narrative may be quite, yeah. uh, might displace the narrative of the one who's the creator, okay. but nevertheless, it, it does exist, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think in a certain way it expands the narrative of even the creator mm. because you are adding on. Mm. But when I was looking at your works and even the Navaras, which mm. I saw in a wonderful exhibition in Bombay, mm. you can't do, a f you can't get into costumes, mm. you can't get into headgear, mm. you can't get into jewelry, you can't get into a kind of atmosphere unless there is an internal transformation mm -hmm. of becoming that person for that moment and I felt that you had managed the moment we were seeing moments you know like little vignettes mm. of being Durga or being Mother India mm -hmm. or being Shakuntala or being mm -hmm. uh, fearless Nadia mm. um, or even Sita I felt that 
it was not it was a performer it was somebody who had transformed a whole inner process for that moment and you can only transform if there's a before mm -hmm. that brings you to that point yeah i mean i just feel i'm very i'm a very bad actor what i actually do is shoot a lot i shoot hundreds of pictures and many variations of the thing and lot of them don't work finally what i select is something that works in every way technically and in terms of the pose and the uh, you know the expression and so on and so forth and sometimes what happens is i'm also with some other characters mm. who are not actors mm. they are again just friends and i have to direct them and quickly go in there and do my pose mm. uh, so sometimes like you know if you uh, in the abduction series yeah, for instance yeah, yeah. where this ravana character mm. is uh, uh, was fantastic <laughs> he's he's very he's, he's an art historian mm. friend of mine mm. you know so uh, all my friends keep asking me for roles so mm. i told him yeah he's got a wonderful yakshagana like yes, face I could so see i said that. i'm going to give you a villain's mm. role mm. so he was actually standing on a stool with one leg up mm. with his mouth open and with a sword held it was extremely difficult Difficult. and it got the sense of flying you know yeah. so we a did movement. many yeah so we did many of them yeah. because some of them don't work so well and this was the one which and sometimes what happens is mine sometimes is not as good i ought to have sort of turned in a more twisted way. i mm. ought to have twisted my body more in that thing but i just uh, went in there right at the end you know so but all together it it worked I well it so brilliant. that's how i that's how i select the mm. uh frames you know so i'm not sure because some of the people people have asked me to act and i always refuse because i feel i'll make an ass of myself uh prasanna asked me to uh, mm. play um, a role mm. uh in one of his plays mm. but i said i'm sorry i cannot speak dialogue mm. i mean i've made films in which i have text mm. actually i don't uh, speak i have not yet spoken mm. but i think if i use speech i'll do it in a very strange abstracted way because i can't deliver a dialogue and nor can my friends so i'll have to uh, do now, something funny about it you know i'll have to make a form but, uh, to uh, <laughs> but, but you know just like yeah. there've been so many changes in the yeah. world of art mm -hmm. there've been lots of changes even in what you consider dialogue yeah, yeah. you know yeah. so within that i think mm. anyone who brings another experience of how they relate to text yeah is what one is actually looking for yeah. because uh, another thing i found very interesting is that you know the ones you uh, uh, shot in the potter's uh, yeah. space the return of the phantom lady uh, yeah. with the return mm. of the phantom lady and they have all these pots mm. i almost got the feeling that you'd come as a savior mm -hmm. as a savior of mm. i don't know what mm. i didn't develop the narrative in my own mm -hmm. mind mm. because it is set in a slum mm. you have the potters mm -hmm. uh, i think the big jars seem to represent Mm. a certain kind of life and mm. then you come with this kind of flash and the mask mm. it almost seems like you had come as mm. uh you know to like a savior like a messiah um it's the opposite actually in the in the in the narrative i didn't feel you'd come to loot no no i come there with a the child to hide in the narrative yes, i yes, hide yes. in the sli in the slum mm. so i seek refuge in the slum and the rancho by tank who's actually the potter who knows yeah. how i shot mm. uh he is the savior actually because he is there protecting me right uh, so i am running away from these villains and mm. all that with this child yes, there was a whole kind of There's journey whole, yeah yeah so, that you yeah. that you showed yeah um i mean have you seen you talked about gubbi virana company mm. you know that had uh, had you seen any of his works no no that was uh, but, uh, i don't think the company exists anymore or no it doesn't close. exist now yeah. but it used to exist 20 years ago 25 because b jayshree yeah. the granddaughter of gubbi virana who lives in bangalore yeah. was senior to me at the national school of drama yeah i know her, and at yeah. that at that time it still existed 25 years ago i'm years not ago. sure but i don't think i've seen uh, any company theater i don't think i've seen their work But I've seen some company theatre, and of course I've seen Surabi. Surabi. And I've seen others in uh, Mysore, for instance, right. and in Bangalore, maybe when I was a kid. Does it But still have those curtains and those backdrops? Absolutely, yeah. And uh, it's very kind of. Uh, I think it was more kind of Marathi theatre, and maybe Gubbi Virana was uh, Marathi theatre particularly. I think had much more kind of sophisticated uh, backdrops. uh because uh because of the parsi theater because of the parsi theater and also i think much more accomplished maybe artists because of bombay no i think you know you there know, was a whole and, uh, uh, the more beautiful the uh, the backdrop the mm. more realistic audience. more realistic uh, and they yeah. had you know a scene change for every 
backdrop. Yeah. If there were 30 people on stage, there were 150 people mm. just working on the mechanics of yeah. changing the backdrop and changing that whole magic of yeah. 100 mirrors and yeah. rain machines and stuff like that. Mm. So it was a very exciting genre which you bring back into public yeah, consciousness. <laughs> yeah. And uh, for me, it's really fascinating. Mm. Have you ever thought of designing for the stage? I'm sure you must have been I inundated. have designed for the stage. You have? Uh, I worked with Rustam Barucha, okay. but this was before I started working with photography, by the way. Mm. I was uh, doing sculpture at that point. And, uh, Which production of This was 1995. Rustam? He was invited by Rangaina in 1994. Uh, yes, he did five. that summer. Some, uh, no, this some was uh, Pierre Gint. Pierre Gint, yes. Uh, which was translated by uh, Raghunandan. Trans mm. uh, actually, uh, not translated exactly, but uh, uh, he had done that. He for made Ninasan. another. He made a version. Was it for Ninasan? No, no, Rangaina. Rangaina. Yeah, I worked there. Then uh, Rustam invited me to design the sets and costumes. Uh -huh. So it was a crazy experience because uh, the whole of Rangaina was on strike. And uh, B. V. Karanth was no, was nowhere on the scene. He was in Bhopal, and the uh, students would refuse to talk to us or uh, have anything to do with us. Mm -hmm. So we were just waiting over there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finally, I mean, they were all friends because I used to live in uh, Mysore, and mm -hmm. when uh, Rangaina started, I was there, yeah. and I used to go there very often because uh, people like Raghunandan and all these people were old friends of mine, mm -hmm. and I used to have lunch with the uh, students or whatever the repertory in the mess and there. so on, yeah. and I used to hang around there a lot, and they were acting really strange. I think after some time they realized that. Uh, we had nothing to do with it, you know. Mm. We had nothing to do with their problems with mm. with the repertory, mm. and uh, they were not being paid or some some problems they mm. had. Uh, so then they started cooperating with us. Mm. Uh, but it was a huge play. It was a mm. three-hour play. Yes, I'm quite familiar. And with uh, yeah, so I did painted backdrops. It's really one of the I most complex plays of Ibsen's. But this one was fantastic because uh, he his version was uh, adaptation actually is a play by itself. I think yeah. he's going to publish it or has already published it very recently. It is called uh, Gunde Garod Charitra. Yes. And uh, it, it was about globalization. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I decided to yeah. use different kinds of styles. Mm. Uh, so the first part is sort of uh, folk, mm. folksy. Mm. Uh, the middle part is sort of very pop. Mm. And the third part is very minimal. Mm -hmm. uh, so I used sort of painted backdrops and uh, it was crazy. I didn't have, I mean single-handedly I, I did something like uh, 100 masks. I mean, with some help from the uh, uh, repertory people, mm. and uh, you know, um, I did these kind of cutout mm. uh, trees and uh, objects, like the Sphinx was a cutout, yeah. painted cutout, mm. and uh, so on. So it was quite interesting, but it was very patchy because the whole circumstances were such that uh, mm. uh, there was no proper kind of uh, team to help me, you know. Mm. Uh, but it was a kind of experiment, yeah. It was some parts of it, and in fact, I think they're still using some of those props and things that I made. <laughs> And uh, one scene particularly was very kind of uh, dramatic because there's this, uh, uh, so like a procession where I made a kind of, uh, it was a reference to the, uh, in fact we, I had a, I asked uh, Rustam that we should have a discussion with the students to, about that particular scene, uh, where there's, um, it, this, it's like a kind of Rathiyatra or something mm -hmm. like that. And uh, so he had a workshop, one day workshop with the students. Mm. Uh, where strangely enough, uh, all the students got together and they started uh, pelting things at the only Muslim guy who was in that repertory. That's so frightening. So, it was very strange. Mm. It, uh, I mean, they just freaked out. Mm. Uh, it was about that scene, which was about this very fundamentalist kind of scene. Mm. I forget what the uh, thing is in the play itself, but uh, it was interpreted by mm. Rustam. I mean, it's such a us. journey, so you can take it in any direction. Ha, but uh, but that it, it was interpreted by Rustam as this kind of uh, thing of the fundamentalist mm. thing, and then I made this kind of rath with kind of mm. flags and all mm. that. Uh, it was very interesting, and then these kind of uh, these peasants, or I don't know what they are, these people in the forest. Mm who I think Pierre Gint meets who are like some yeah, sort yeah. of uh, fundamentalists, mm. you know, so it was interpreted that mm. way and these people actually responded that way. So, and what I found interesting about theatre design is that, you know, when you're an artist and you make something, mm. and at that time I was a sculpture, so it's, it remains as that, mm. but once you put it on the stage, mm. you know, these um, uh, actors start doing all sorts of things with it, mm. which is fantastic, mm. whether it's a prop or a costume or uh, something on the stage, uh, they really bring it alive. For example, I made these three huge puppets. Mm -hmm. You know, when Pierre Gint meets these three, I don't know whether they're witches or these yeah. three characters mm -hmm. in the in the forest. Mm -hmm. So I made them like these puppets, uh, folk puppets, in which mm -hmm. they have for processional puppets mm -hmm. in Karnataka. Mm -hmm. So they had these 
uh, heads and like uh, you could I think they wore them on the head so mm. they had these big skirts coming mm. like this made mm. of uh, cane mm. um, so uh, what happened with Pierre Gint uh, they were about 8 feet tall so they start dancing around Pierre Gint the mm. actor mm. so he started having fun like he would uh, dive under their skirts come out from the other side mm. so it's amazing how mm. they bring it alive you mm. know so that's very interesting mm. for me about real mm. theatre mm. but because um, you know yeah. a set design has mm. to be animated yeah. in the same manner as the actors are animated. Yeah. It can't become static, it can't mm. become just a decorative motive, but it's got to yeah. be, uh, got to come, it's got to become alive by the way yeah. the uh, actors interact with it. So that is why the relationship between mm. a designer, mm. a director and a performer mm. is so inextricable. You mm -hmm. can't separate one from the other and unfortunately what is happening in theatre now people just don't have the time to make these kind of sometimes mm. wonderful collaborations. Mm. Um, no I think in Indian theatre what happens is that the directors are used to designing the play. Yes so, because I think it really comes from having yeah. especially people like me who work in regions mm. there's such limited funds that you really can't hire mm. and stuff like that so that's a different yeah. area altogether. No but they're also you know what happens is that uh, they're not used to dealing with an artist. So even Ra with Raghunandan, they were like, we had problems while working mm. together because Raghunandan is a director and designs himself. Yeah. So he was, uh, uh, he didn't, he, it was a new role for him just to be the writer mm. of the play. Mm -hmm. So he was almost, almost sort of jealous of Rustum and jealous of me. <laughs> so so uh, one had to have, a, uh, you know, I had to ask Rustum to ask, uh, tell Raghunandan not to interfere, yeah. you know, right because he was... Huh, because he mm. would come, no he was writing till the last minute. Okay. So he was bringing out pages every day, it was hilarious, it mm. was great fun. So he would come every day and he would see what I was doing and uh, he would criticize it. So I would get really upset because we were really working under pressure mm. and I had to finish things, mm. you know. Uh, so I said, look, I can't take this anymore and then you have to tell Raghunandan to sort of uh, mm. keep away from me, otherwise I can't work, I can't finish <laughs> till the end. So it's, uh, it's uh, I, I know with people have had pr problems working with, a friend of mine has had pro problems working with Prasanna as well mm. because Prasanna again designs, he's a very good designer and he designs his plays as well. So I, it's also difficult because that concept is not there in India because of various reasons of working with an artist and uh, I don't know how, I mean, it, it, you know, it's interesting but it's, it's I think, difficult also. I think, you know, these kind mm. of things really mm. work when you've mm. had a team that's been together for a long time. Yeah. Sometimes just to say, you know, I love so-and-so's work, I'd love yeah. them to design for me, mm. but somehow the sensibilities may be coming yeah. from other sources or mm. they may mm. be a mismatch. Either you're adventurous enough to say, yeah. why not, you know, yeah. let's, let's go in another direction. So that becomes very, mm. a very complicated relationship. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, the kind of, the kind of backdrops in which you position yourself. Yeah. Uh, during that time, there mm. was a palace scene and there was mm. a forest scene mm. and even though painters were working mm. but they knew it was a forest scene so mm. within that they could put their own birds and their own flowers mm. but in a certain way it was connecting with mm. what was going to happen in front mm. the rajaka mm. uh, kursi and the mm. pillars whether they were Corinthian or Gothic mm. didn't really matter because yeah. you were not into that kind of stuff mm. but what is so fascinating about your work is where you're using image where you're using history, where you're using calendar art, mm. where you're using memory, mm -hmm. your memory, mm. which is interjecting with history, with calendar art, with yeah. image, with collective memory, with cinema, with studio uh, portraiture. And how in a certain way mm. you seem to pull out a thread mm. that, are, that is linking so many, perhaps for a a researcher, separate mm. elements, but they come together so marvelously in your work, and yet you're bringing something of yourself. It's it's not a replication, but it is a mm. very interesting entry. Pushpamala makes as an artist <laughs> into an inheritance, mm -hmm. a common inheritance, but it kind of. It just takes it somewhere else, you know, it just alters it, oofs it, that it makes you re-see. Like the Navaras, yeah. you know, for me, the Navaras as a theatre person, many of my exercises of developing an actor are based on the Navaras. When I tell them, why don't you die in Shringharas? Why do you have to die in Karuna? 
-hmm. you know why don't you make love in vibhats mm -hmm. you know uh, why do you have to make love in yeah. shringhara let's mm -hmm. see what happens you know mm -hmm. so you always trying to break the stereotypical mm -hmm. uh, the the cliche mm -hmm. approach to how emotions should be played out mm -hmm. and i saw that element mm -hmm. in your work very strongly yeah um, you know i'm basically why things hang together is i i, I make a conscious effort because uh, i'm not interested in uh, the concept of hybrid mm. or the uh, concept of eclectic mm. uh, where it's, it seems as if uh, i mean for me those concepts mean as if things uh, arbitrarily come together or naturally come together mm. here like uh, i'm very consciously trying to build up a certain language mm. uh, a certain form and from things i am personally very interested in and i'm following all through my life mm. you know it's not something that i chuck in here and there just to be interesting or uh, uh, just to be novel or uh, uh, you know which don't uh, yeah, work way, together I and mean, that is uh, very much evident that it's, it's coming like, from uh, yeah. a very definitive creative space uh, yeah and um, uh, yeah so, so again like you know for example when you uh, refer to the mother motherland uh, performance mm. um you know when i first started thinking about the performance it was very simple mm. i thought i'll just wear some uh, the mother, mother india costume and maybe just uh, but that knitting uh, was a stroke of about. genius <laughs> yeah. and the glasses so, even more so so one so you start improvising mm. once you get that thought you start mm. thinking and then saying yeah i can put this and how can i make it more interesting uh, because very simple things don't actually interest me i like to sort of uh, i like the baroque i like the flamboyant yeah. i like the spectacular and all that so that's what i'm using mm. and i like again this humor mm. you know this other india wearing glasses and it is hilarious so everyone burst into laughter mm -hmm. you know uh, when mamta came and put on my uh, glasses mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. in this very so we worked it out so that mm -hmm. it is very kind of ceremonial and mm -hmm. i raised my head very slowly and mm -hmm. then uh, you know and she comes and then you know i i you know uh, get the glasses on my nose and i very slowly start the you know knitting and all that um, and then but the, the but again the backdrop like a box theater you mm -hmm. know uh, so it's, it's sort of in between uh, performance uh and uh, literary kind of uh, uh, like a talk mm. uh or uh, or theater you know mm. uh, so it's sort of in, again I, i like that kind of fine edge mm. between uh, different things you know and what i also yeah. found very fascinating uh way you bring the hidden mm. also into the vis vi visual for uh, uh frame mm -hmm. uh i saw an evidence of it in I think that studio, you know, the mirror within the mirror, mm. the 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 kind of three images of the person sitting in, in a, a in a little frame. In the return of Phantom Lady, that's uh, yeah, um, uh, in the in in the office. I think there was such a such a yeah. cornucopia of images that perhaps mm. I may mm. have mixed up two images, but there was there was a kind of what happens prior to mm. the person mm. whose image has been captured. Mm. What happens prior to that? Mm. was also part of the process of mm. the framing mm -hmm. uh and it was so brechtian you know where he mm. said that nothing must be hidden mm. there should be no genteel mm. uh massaging of illusion mm. it should all be in front of you the what's and all mm. um but uh, even within that breath that made it into such a fine art mm. that that became a way of working mm. and i saw elements of that in your work yesterday have you yeah. by any chance read brecht i'm sure you must definitely, have definitely yes i'm very interested mm. in brecht and this whole thing of alienation and then what see what i'm doing is i'm deconstructing these archetypes mm. or stereotypes mm. and i'm deconstructing the scene and that's going on mm. you know and uh, another thing i'm very interested in is the principle of montage yeah where different i mean i particularly used it in my films which i didn't show yesterday i mean i showed two videos which are part of the uh, uh the passion mm. uh, uh, series mm. but i made short films mm. i made two short films mm. where i used text and image and sound mm. uh you know and they one is 11 minutes long and uh, one is uh, 35 minutes long parasotum mm. um so i definitely use some of these uh, theories of uh, uh you know uh, like eisenstein i'm very interested yeah. in and uh, you know this whole uh, and even within the kind of photograph um uh, actually I've, in some of them I've, i mean very few have used cut and paste mm -hmm. that is the mother india series mm -hmm. which obviously like the, with the bhagat singh offering yeah. his head or or <laughs> one of them with the um, uh, mother india and the lioness mm -hmm. 
Uh, but normally they are actually photographs. Then suddenly you have the yeah. lion alone. Pardon? You suddenly have the, you know, <laughs> the lion you know, with such the such a pathetic you know? lion, you know, <laughs> the symbol of the nation and yeah. so on. Uh, this kind of uh, uh, pepe kind of mache. Look, il, he looked like Wooden and he lost his yeah. potency. Yeah. So I'm playing with these mm, things. Yeah. So again, like, you know, I, I went to this costume place mm. and I found this ridiculous lion there. Yeah. So, I was, so that's the thing. When people ask me, like, yeah, you're a sculptor. Why do you, somebody asked me, We're, you're a sculptor, you know, why don't you make the lion? You know, why do you have to go and rent that ugly lion from uh, costume? But, you know, when I make it, like, I'll make it perfectly, you yeah. know, uh, because I won't make a lion like that, which is badly done. It's very difficult mm. to make a badly <laughs> made uh, yeah. thing. So, but when I go there, it's so weird, the, the things that they have. So when you use those found things another kind of meaning comes into the work then I start playing with that but you know I want to know you know yeah. it's very interesting I mean I, I remember when I lived in Bombay 35 years ago yeah there were still those Purani you know where you could mm. Zarivalas and mm. we could go into and pick up mm. costumes and mm. uh, uh, part of the company theater mm. remnants are those kind of shops still in existence absolutely in Where? fact, uh, there's Where Madan Lal Dresswala, which is a very Madan famous guy. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, in fact, I got my Phantom Lady costume made over there. Mm -hmm. Made? Uh, but do mm -hmm. they still have in their store? They have, yeah. They have, like, actually, uh, they rent a lot of things for uh, children's fancy dress. Yes. Uh, the but shocking thing is, and also for weddings. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, they have I wedding know. turbans and costumes. Yeah. And then uh, they have other things, like, um, uh, for example, I, uh, I hired a, a Christian wedding dress. Mm. I mean, it was in ridiculous, horribly filthy actually. I thought I'll get some disease wearing it, but they were, they were hideous. They were really old. So, you, you know, the, sometimes like not getting them made, which would be of course more expensive, but renting something uh, because they make it in their way. And, and that has its own history. Yes, I you know, know exactly. So, that comes yeah. into the picture, yeah. you know. And in Bangalore, I have this uh, Prabhat uh, dresses. This still which is a, ha, It is an offshoot of this other company which is and called uh, uh, Prada, Prabhat uh, Stores. Mm. Uh, but this is uh, another one, one of the sons or uh, mm. whatever, uh, grandsons or something like that. So, they are very funny. Like for example, uh, uh, I mean they have these, uh, it's, it's in a complete mess, you know. So, they have this kind of storeroom with boxes and boxes of say uniforms. Mm. Uh, you know, and there'll be one guy, they're always watching TV because they're very bored. Mm. So there's a small TV somewhere and this man is constantly looking at uh, the TV, some serials and all that. So I went, I wanted an army uniform for this uh, part which see. my friend was uh, playing in, in my film. I didn't show it mm. yesterday. Uh, so I said I want a uni army uniform. So this guy, uh, you know, absentmindedly says, ah, this, this box, it's full of security guard uniforms. I said, these are security guard uniforms. It says security guard. Mm. So he said, ah, okay, okay, not that box, the other box. Mm. It's full of police uniforms. It says police, mm. like, you know, <laughs> so it's, mm. it's maddening. But you find all sorts of weird things that way. Like I found that lion, for instance, mm. you know. There's a very ugly peacock, which also I want to use, mm. for instance. Mm. And they have really strange costumes. For example, uh, the first time I did Mother India, mm. I actually used a sari. Mm. I used a nine yard sari, mm. but it didn't work very well. Mm. Then I decided to hire a costume from them and they have the stitched Bharatnatyam like yeah, costume. Yeah. Uh, so that works much better. Mm. It looks hideous when you see it, but mm. when you wear it, it's mm. uh, very tailored, you mm. know. So it gives that kind of uh, mythological, TV mythological look. Mm -hmm. uh, so there again, you know, you think of TV serials, you mm. think of uh, Telugu mythologicals. Mm. You know, Telugu films are famous for mythologicals. Yes, I know. We grew up uh, seeing NTR yeah. films and all mm. that. Uh, so all these things come in, you know. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, they're in my head and they're actually in those objects. Uh, and then it's how you use them and put them together. And the shops still exist, you say. Yeah. They are sitting on prime space in mm -hmm. Bombay from my memory. Mm -hmm. They were all so, uh, Marine, Drive. Uh, Marine Drive and little Prabha Devi or one, yeah. you know, places like yeah. that. Do they get people to come there and hire or no, I think does what it still exist or do they have no, how do they support themselves? With no, I think they make uh, costumes for TV serials for instance, mm -hmm. like say 100 costumes. And, uh, for a dance sequence in a Hindi film. Yeah, or like war sequence yeah. or uh, things like that as they, well. So they're still in business with they're that. They're very much in business. But thank yeah. God they haven't and uh, films. abandoned some of their old... I uh, think they're prospering and they, I mean, they don't even bother to wash their clothes or mm. to dry clean them and mm. they're just lying around. Mm. I think they just keep using them till they fall apart and then make new ones according to demand or whatever it is. But it's very, I really had these funny experiences like once I went to this Prabhat stores in Bangalore mm. saying I want uh, 
uh, do you have any nun co nuns costume? Mm. Uh, so they said, oh yes, just last week we made 100 nuns costumes for this uh, convent down the road. Mm. So even the convent, mm. the real convent uh, is, is, is going mm. to the, you know, uh, uh, costume company to mm. make their habits, nuns habits. <laughs> so they said, yes, That's we have two left over, you yeah. know, from that. Mm. So it's, it's amazing, mm. you know, I, uh, when doing this, my uh, project Native Women of South India, mm. uh, which I uh, worked on for four years, mm. uh, I really worked with the entire sort of um, uh, the, uh, the popular culture industry in Bangalore. Mm. And it's so interesting all their histories, talking about cultural memory mm. and mm. you know history. Mm. Each one has, you know, they've come from somewhere and there's some background and how they've got to that place mm. where they're doing these things mm. and the kinds of things they do. And again, these stories around them mm. are so funny that uh, I wanted to actually someone to make a film. Mm. Uh, because I, I'm not a filmmaker and this documentary film and all that I didn't want to get into. Mm. Uh, but it's fantastic material. I asked one or two, I asked Ramani for instance, like mm -hmm. you know, why don't you do it and asked Surabhi Sharma, this mm -hmm. other filmmaker friend, mm -hmm. but they somehow, they, you know, they didn't get into it, mm -hmm. but it's amazing, you know, uh, because it's, uh, uh, I had this uh, film hoarding painter, mm -hmm. Elamalai, mm -hmm. uh, who was actually my neighbor, he was in my, lived in my area mm -hmm. and he worked for the temple, there's a big mm -hmm. Rajarajeshwari temple mm -hmm. over there with the Swamiji who was very popular. Mm -hmm. So he actually had a studio inside the temple and he used to do all the festival decorations and it's like a Madurai style temple so the uh, supervised this painting of the Koparams and all mm. that. And he was also a film hoarding painter mm. and he also designed some of the architecture like in, bang, in um, entrance of my um, um, colony mm. uh, there's a huge ugly kind of gateway you know. Mm. And he said, I designed this and he showed me the drawings of mm. it. So these people are, and he said like, you know, uh, my uh, Swamiji's friends, mm. other Swamiji's in that area, it's full of ashrams. Mm. They come to me and they ask me to design their ashrams. Mm -hmm. You know, and he s designs film sets as well. Mm -hmm. So there are these people like they, they, you know you don't realize that uh, you know when you live in a place and you go around that 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 uh, that uh, this whole environment has been created by these people. You know I feel so jealous when you, <laughs> you tell know? me these stories. Yeah. So extremely jealous because mm. I think what is happening in Punjab, mm. maybe because of partition and maybe because of uh, a migrant population that made mm. this their home. Mm. You know today. I remember when I did a play Kitchen Katha many years ago, mm. we managed to get somebody to do calligraphy mm -hmm. uh, for some backdrops where we wanted to write recipes, mm -hmm. uh, where we made them die. They were adventurous enough to mm. bear with us and do little experiments. A month ago, I wanted some calligraphy done for some other reason. Mm. Now it's all pexy, whatever, flex or whatever. Mm. All those uh, people who make boards, you know, mm. dukan ke boards, mm. they have just disappeared or mm. gone into some other way of earning a livelihood. Yeah. So even your simple everyday mm. uh, things that you saw, that is why mm. when you go to South India, you mm. know that lovely bazaar in Mysore, mm -hmm. where you can get your kumkum and you can get your yeah. haldi and you can get all your wonderful flowers for the temple or for your hair. Mm. They're still so rich, I mean, which mm. means you're being, you're being, you're kind of experiencing a visual image constantly. Mm -hmm. How you convert it, transform it, spread it, not use it, is mm. your own thing. But when you, even in a city like Chandika, everything has a little blandness, little mm. standardization. Mm. Um, so I really feel jealous when you talk about this painter, you know, who makes these, you know, which is called, which would, which would be really part of a new sensibility, a kind of kitsch, mm. a kind of commercial, popular uh, form of decoration, they still do exist. Because I know that when you go to Kerala, you have these gates that come up mm. for some uh, festival or some ritual. And all those gates, you know, with their little kele kapattas and their mm. uh, coconuts, I mean, you don't see those kind of wonderful visual sights in in our part of the country. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> I mean, everyone says they're disappearing, but a uh, lot of them are still there. They're going into different, slightly different kinds of occupations. How do cars right? get decorated during some, mm. I don't know what festival, or in mm. Kerala, Pongal, you know, where you have yeah. thousands of women lining the streets and cooking mm. rice. Mm. To me, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> 
absolutely mesmerizing. I remember seeing your play, you know, I think that was Kitchen Katha, mm. where you had cooking on yeah, stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was wonderful. I think mm. that was the first play I saw of yours in Bangalore. Mm. Many, many yeah. years ago. Oh, it's been so lovely talking to you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know how much time we've taken, but I think there's so many other curiosities I have about your work, which uh, I would certainly like to share, have you share with, with me and for the archives. But your Navaras, uh, I think was all, if my memory doesn't fail me, was all done in a kind of sepia, black and white. A sepia, yeah. That was really fascinating. Actually, the uh, way, uh, where I did it was very interesting because, uh, uh, again, I started the series uh, uh, quite casually in a workshop in Bombay, artist workshop. Then I uh, reworked it later, went back and uh, reshot. But I found this wonderful old studio in Dadar. Uh, next to Chitra Cinema. It still exists, but the man has died, mm. uh, Mr. Thakur, J. H. Thakur. Mm. So he used to take um, uh, st film stills in the 1950s and 60s mm. because all the studios were down the road, you know. And uh, so he's taken some of the most famous portraits of uh, Nargis and, uh, you know, Meena Kumari and uh, those big stars of that mm. generation, mm. down to Madhuri Dikshit as well. Mm -hmm. So he had invented this kind of lighting, mm. which is taken from Hollywood glamour lighting, which I was talking about, yeah. you know, the uh, project that I did with the, in Paris with the Aku yeah. studio. Uh, uh, and, and uh, but he used to make these narrative pictures. Mm. Uh, which was, I think he, it was his thing, I've never seen something like that anywhere else. So when I saw his old connect collection, mm -hmm. like he used to have these pro projected uh, cutouts with the, and project shadows on the wall for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. And then he had one picture where he had this man in a suit and a hat with a thin moustache, you know, mm -hmm. like the way villains used to be dressed, yeah. running with a gun, mm -hmm. with a kind of kind K N Singh type, yeah. maybe it was K N Singh, mm. uh, with this kind of lot of smoke at the back. Mm. So I said, uh, you know, uh, did you shoot this on the site or something like that? Because uh, uh, it looks as if there's a fire and somebody's, or there's an explosion and somebody's running. So he said, no, 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 all these film stills were actually done in the studio. They were actually not shot on site at all. Mm. And he said, you know how I created this thing? He said, I made my assistant lie down under, the, under his feet, mm. at his feet, mm. and smoke a cigarette and blow clouds of smoke. Mm. And he lit it up in such mm. a way that it looks like a big oh, conflagration. That's, that's so so amazing stories. Mm. And he used to sit and gossip about the mm. film but, thing. But that's what is like coming back yeah. into theater. Yeah. We yeah. kind of, uh, you, you know, we yeah. are kind of, you want to show rain, so you just have somebody stand on a, Siri yeah. and just through a uh, watering can yeah. have water. You know, it's exactly. so much more exciting yeah. than to perhaps recreate it through illusion. Yeah. Uh, how wonderful, how wonderful. So I used his uh, mm. kind of style mm. to make this Navarasa. Yeah. I mean, earlier I did uh, two or three or four uh, uh, things without thinking of the Navarasa. Mm. Then I thought of developing mm. it as a Navarasa. Mm. Uh, so this is an, again a funny uh, thing, you know, because I did this Bibatsa. Mm. You know, and some of them had references from mm. early uh, uh, films, and some of them I was conco concocting, you know, mm. and uh, or some of them were from studio portraiture mm. as well. Mm. So, um, so this Bibatsa was so horrible when I did it the first time. Mm. So I rang up Shanta Gokhale, who I'm very mm. close yeah, to. Yeah. I've known her for many years. Mm. So I said, Shanta, like you know, I made an, I'm making an ass of myself. Uh, I did this Bibatsa, and uh, it looks really hideous. <laughs> so what do I do, you know? Because it was again. Hideous. No, mm -hmm. as I said mm -hmm. that uh, this, um, uh, if I act, mm -hmm. it becomes too much. Mm -hmm. So she told me, look, every emotion looks the same mm -hmm. and it's the context which gives them that meaning. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Bibatsa, like, you know, you screw up your face and you uh, waggle your eyes, eyebrows and then even for uh, Raudra, you uh, waggle, your, uh, waggle your eyebrows and all that. So many of them, like, you know, for example, in Kathakali, mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they, you sort of widen your eyes mm -hmm. and you waggle your eyebrows mm -hmm. and do something with mm -hmm. your lips and you, you know, uh, uh, it, it could be anything, mm -hmm. you know. But you said, the, but where it comes in, that expression, mm -hmm. that, that becomes then set as that emotion mm. and it's always fleeting and changing mm. as well. So she said you feel it inside you mm. uh, rather than trying to make an exaggerated kind of mm. uh, look. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tried to do that, mm. you know, but I don't know how it <laughs> worked. So uh, yeah, and that was I, very interesting. It was really quite wonderful. I think it was, it was, uh, I remember it was on one single wall, mm. all of them together yeah. and I couldn't get away from it. I must have been to that exhibition at least three times because and that was in the it NGMA so show yeah, of Kemal. Yeah, yeah. That's where and I saw it. it. Uh, I'll ask you one last question. I'm sure you're getting exhausted. <laughs> you were in Baroda. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not mistaken, when you were in Baroda, 
Nasreen Muhammadi was was my t- well, first teacher actually. Yeah, Nasreen was one of my closest friends. I see. And uh, she was very special in my life, and um, in fact, she gifted me so many of her works. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people used to tell me, especially Nirmal Verma. I can't understand why Nasreen is so fond of you because he mm. saw me as this performer, mm. you know, with sets mm. and uh, visuals. And there was Nasreen who was a mim- minimalist, mm. who was like a little Zen priest when she mm. worked. Somewhere I did read at some stage that mm. she impacted you in certain ways. Mm. Nasreen, if I'm not mistaken. I think Marta has written about it because. Um, um, I don't know because you know I had sort of arguments with her when I was a uh, when I was her student. She was in when I first joined Baroda in the first year uh, foundation course. She was teaching us drawing, mm. and um, I didn't sort of I was not uh, uh, sympathetic to her way of seeing things at all. You know because mm-hmm. I think I'm this opposite. Mm. I'm the more the flamboyant type, like you know, who uh, again the spectacular and whatnot. I responded more to Nilima, who's also one yeah, of my teachers yeah, at that point. Yeah. I think she was teaching there for a year, so mm. she was teaching painting. So I had some arguments with her. I even sulked and didn't go to class for some time and so on, mm. you know, at that point. But I think, um, you know, having Nasreen was very important for us because, for one thing, a very strong woman artist. Mm. Uh, now there are no women teachers at all in Baroda, by the mm. way. Or in Shantini Ketan, I think. You know, at that time, I think we had about three, and mm. Nilima briefly. Mm. Uh, so it makes a lot of difference having. Uh, and she, uh, uh, Nasreen was a very strong figure mm. because she did her own thing. She had, a, and, and it was not only her as a teacher; it was her whole life. Mm. Uh, so she was like a model. You know, mm. there was this woman living alone in this beautiful, very aesthetic but very austere yeah. home, yeah. very minimalist. So her home, her food. Mm-hmm. Like when we sometimes went there, of course, they all used to feed us because we used to have this horrible hostel food. Mm-hmm. So wherever we were, whenever we went to a, a teacher's house, they would always feed us. Mm-hmm. So she would have these beautiful glass plates, mm-hmm. I remember, mm-hmm. uh, with the brightly colored salad and there'd be rice and dal, very simple mm-hmm. food. But it was com- very aesthetic mm-hmm. and uh, with a glass, uh, you know, like a bowl and a, a transparent glass plate. And everything would be, otherwise would be gray and black mm-hmm. and white. Mm, yes. Uh, you know, and including her clothes yeah. and her work, yeah. and yeah, the way she sat on the, the floor, pattern. and so it was like this whole um, world, you know, mm. that was presented to you, which is so different from what you came from, your middle class parents mm. or your wherever, you know, or uh, your small town or your big city or wherever you came from. Mm. A, a conven- we all came from conventional homes mainly, mm. you know. So to have this kind of, uh, in a sense, Bohemia, but not that mm. kind of. Uh, mm. uh, uh, the wild bohemia, mm. but this kind of uh, Very uh, zen, disciplined, a, a completely different yeah. uh, model of mm. a, of, mm. a, of an artist's life mm. and of a wom- woman's life. Uh, so that was fantastic, actually. Mm. Mm. And I don't know, like maybe her work was also performative, because you know she has. Uh, she she um, used to spend hours. No, no. Uh, decision. What is the disease How? she had? Sorry, uh, uh, she had this. Um, uh, Problem, no, of which she died of. Uh, yeah, it's a kind of very rare uh, no, problem. I can't remember the I name. I can't remember the Her name. Brother also died. Yes, uh, it was called. Thing. No, I th- uh, where you actually lost. It was a Control nervous problem. Your ma- muscles. Exactly, and a person like that with a family yeah. background like that, performing this minimalism yeah. and making these. I, I remember, like you know, I just uh, recently saw this big exhibition in Delhi in the KNMA. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was wonderful because a lot of it is from the 80s when I was in 70s and 80s when actually we used to sit there and watch her work, work yeah. or saw her work. Maybe she was not working right in front of us. She would chat with us, mm-hmm. but uh, her work was lying on mm-hmm. the table and she was doing those very works. Mm-hmm. So perfectly controlled mm-hmm. lines, you know. I mean, uh, I would find it different to difficult to draw them, you know, because I'm very clumsy. <laughs> but uh, uh, a person with uh, this kind of illness, which was already manifesting itself, mm-hmm. uh, performing this life as well, you know. Uh, so it was also like a, a kind of a, the performance of this life and this art was also a kind of a, a, a fortress which she built mm. against degeneration, mm. you know, because she could have easily uh, degenerated personally and emotionally and uh, health, you know, physically into this kind of uh, another person, mm. you know, the opposite mm. person. 
uh, where you lose control mm -hmm. completely, which never did mm -hmm. till the end. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean, this is something I suddenly mm -hmm. thought of mm -hmm. now. But I remember uh, when yeah. she used to come and stay yeah. with me, and she used mm -hmm. to love soup. Mm -hmm. So I'd make a bowl of soup for her. But that time the disease had already set in, mm -hmm. and she would dribble. You know, mm -hmm. there would be a little dribble. Mm -hmm. uh, but the dribble was also so aesthetic. <laughs> I feel, you know, if I dribble, mm -hmm. uh, when I'm eating, sometimes you know, you always have a little food that mm -hmm. lodges itself where it shouldn't. It's completely mm -hmm. unfeminine and mm -hmm. quite hopeless. Mm -hmm. But uh, with Nasreen, it was, uh, it kind of fitted in. But mm -hmm. so I like that idea of. Mm. Your perception of how mm. the way she dressed, the way she sat, mm. how she configured where you would sit in relationship to her. Exactly. It was yeah. like blocking. You know, it was like stage blocking. Mm, it's been great talking to you. Thank you very, very much. And uh, I hope you keep in touch. Thanks, Neelam. Mm. It's been great. Mm. And it's been great actually getting another kind of perspective. Mm.